Welcome back everybody, this is the Johnny Mayor, and I am continuing with my walkthrough of Final Fantasy 1 Dawn of Souls, the PSP version. So last time we managed to upgrade our jobs to higher level classes, and so what I had to do off screen was go around and collect some brand new magic and items for each of my jobs. And so basically for my ninja I got level 1 through 4 black magic 4, for my knight I got level 1 through 3 white magic, and for my white wizard and my red wizard, I actually got new spells for, including the awesome exit spell. So now we can get out of dungeons without having to walk all the way out and have to worry about random encounters. Now, first thing I want to do in this episode is show off the rest of the caves in these Dragon Islands, as they're called. Or, I think they're called like the Cardine Islands or something like that. So there is one of the specialty extra dungeons that is in this area. So this is the Hellfire Chasm, which was opened up when we beat Marilith in the uh, volcano not too long ago. It was at Mount Gulg or something like that. And so if you enter that door up there, basically you have to finish the dungeon. Although we do have the exit spell now, so we can use that as well. But uh, we don't want to do that yet. We're going to wait until we actually finish the main game before I actually take on those extra dungeons. Now, the other caves have random dragons in them that will tell you various, you know, basically useless information about their race and their king and stuff like that, but the real reason we're here is to pick up all the different treasures that are available. Now there's nothing super exciting in this area, but there is a lot of Jill, and uh, to actually continue the main storyline and go to the next dungeon, for our next elemental fiend to take on and crystal, we're gonna need a special item. And to get that special item, we have to find a character. And to find that character, we're gonna have to go to a town. <laughs> and so it's a little bit of a fetch quest, of course. I know shocking in a Final Fantasy game that you would have to do a fetch quest, but we're gonna need a lot of Jill in order to complete that quest. Now I've done quite a bit of grinding kind of unintentionally just because of the random encounter rate in this game. So I have plenty of Jill, but I did want to show you kind of some areas through these caves where you can actually get some more if you need it. So especially if you're playing the NES version, um, this will come in all handy because you won't have to spend a ton of time building up your levels and getting this Jill, you know, off camera. So we'll pick all of that up, and as I mentioned, we will talk to these uh, random dragons Although, not every cave has them in him. So let's run around and look for these specialty doors. Hi there, buddy. Yes, we already got that token of courage and it was a rat tail for whatever reason. I guess maybe that's kind of an illusion of some kind to try to dissuade people from thinking it might actually be valuable to make it a disgusting rat's tail. But we only have a few more caves to go to, and then we will head to our next town, which is actually the town of Gaia. So let's head in here. Dragon Cave B1. All right, a tent. We're very quickly getting beyond what a tent can do for us because they don't heal a lot of HP or MP. We're actually gonna have to upgrade the cottages very soon. Those actually fully heal you when you use them on the world map. Dry Ether, also known as an X Ether in various other versions, and a Gold Needle. And I think that's about it. So let's head out, jump in our airship, and uh, I will show you how to get to Gaia. Basically, you need to head to the east, and it's the farthest most red mark there on our map. So that's where we're gonna head to the north of that massive desert over there. It has a tower located right in the middle of it. And I don't mean Kefka's Tower from Final Fantasy VI. But it is an important tower that we're gonna have to uh, go to eventually. Let's head into Gaia, which is accessible now that we have our airship. And we'll talk to a lot of the citizens. They're actually pretty surprised to see us because obviously they're city is in the middle of a massive mountain range, so they don't get many visitors. And they talk about the fact that this continent is kind of shaped like a hawk's head, or a wing, or whatever. It's hawk-like in some way. So basically, keep that in mind, I guess. And this dancer does not believe that we've been able to get here. Yes, we can fly. 
No, it's not impossible. Anything's possible with science. All right, so we have to find a fairy because she's uh, actually disappeared from this area. Find out as we talk to these citizens that uh, fairies are the only ones that can get us a special item that we need, which is called Oxyl or Oxnol or something like that. But we're starting to get to a point where we can access really high level magic. Now, unfortunately, none of my characters are at our high enough level in order to actually use this magic, but we will come back and get it later. So you'll notice we're starting to get a major difference here. The red wizard cannot use a lot of the higher level magic. There's very limited spells that they can actually use. And they cannot use level 8, which is the highest level magic at all. In fact, I think there might only be two level 7 magic spells that a red wizard can actually learn. I could be wrong with that. We'll see. Now you might have noticed that there were only two spells in each of those magic shops and that's because for whatever reason in this game they split the magic at level 7 and 8 between different magic shops in different towns. Not sure why they do that, but they do. So uh, we'll have to access the others later. Now we want lots of protect rings. They are a very good hand armlet for all of our characters and as you can see they protect against instant death. And uh, as the game progresses, we're going to be encountering a lot of enemies that like to use instant death spells. So, they're fashionable. They increase our defense and evasion, so that's good. And they have that nice little status effect protection. Now, I'm not sure if the ruby armlet is actually better for my red mage. Yeah, it is. So we'll have to buy one of those for him, too. Pretty expensive, though. Luckily, I have quite a bit of Jill. Let's throw that on myself or my namesake. And the only weapon here is the Cat Claws, which is actually the best weapon in the game for a black wizard. So if you are running a black wizard and you would like a weapon that can actually do some damage, then that is one that you can use. But obviously black wizards, not really known for their physical attack strength. And here's the level 8 magic shot for black. Now we cannot use this at all. The only party that can is a black wizard. So it's mostly useless except the final level 8 spell, which is actually nuke or flare. That spell is pretty useful if you are running a black wizard. And then for the white magic, we'll come back and get some of this once we uh, actually level up our white wizard a little bit more. Especially holy and dispel and then there's also full life or uh, life 2 or whatever you want to call it uh, so it's called oxyale that's what we need it's actually a material that will allow you to breathe underwater so items about the same although now we can finally buy cottages which is nice because again that'll allow us to fully heal outside of dungeons on the world map so we don't necessarily have to come back to an inn. And what do you have to say? Okay, that's good to know for later. We're gonna go to a particular town where we can't understand the language of the citizens. So we will have to find someone who can help us interpret that. And this is the guy who caused the trouble. He caught the ferry in the spring over to the east and then he sold her to the caravan. Not that they tell you where the caravan is. I will tell you, because luckily I know, but uh, yeah. This is where the spring is, over here to the east and north. So we need to find the fairy and bring her back here so that she will give us the Oxyale. So let's go do that. So the caravan is actually far to the west, to the north of the little desert that's over there. As you might expect, a caravan in most traditional RPGs is uh, typically based off of a desert of some kind. So let's head over here, see if we can find this desert. And this is where the caravan is, but to get to it, we're gonna have to walk all the way across the desert by parking here. I did a quick save there, and now let's head up to the caravan. 
You need 40,000 Jill to buy back the fairy. So, buddy, give us back the fairy. It's highway robbery, but uh, there's not much we can do about it. And now he sells potions you can use in battle that will raise your stats by various amounts temporarily. So if you feel like it, you can buy some of those. They can be helpful. But otherwise, that's it. Not much left to do here. So let's head back to our airship and we're gonna head back to Gaia. Nothing new. So let's head to the north and we'll actually head to the west. Because uh, obviously the world is round. And here is Gaia. What's gonna happen once we enter town? The fairy runs away back to the spring. So I'm gonna do is cut over there and I'll meet you guys there. We are. That's okay. That would be good. That's what we need. That's why we saved you. So in essence, you're paying 40,000 Jill for the Oxyale. Since it is necessary to continue the game, pretty much worth it. Alright. So, now we can head over to the other town that's in the north here. And that's going to allow us to access the fourth dungeon. Not the fourth dungeon, the third dungeon, the water shrine. But uh, there's actually a little side quest we can do in the meantime. So there is a waterfall to the north of the next town we have to go to, which is here. And that's where the waterfall is. And uh, there's an item in there we're going to need for when we finish the water shrine. But, uh, you know, we might as well get it now because there's also some good items in it. So here is the waterfall. We're going to have to take this river all the way up to it. And uh, we'll be going to that town eventually. You'd think, oh, I can park here, but no. So, wait, maybe I can park here, but no. <laughs> you have to park all the way down to the south, and then you have to canoe all the way up the river. But we might as well do that. Let's go. I'm sure we'll get into some random encounters. Probably nothing new, so I'm not going to be showing anything off unless it's a brand new enemy. We'll be back for you, town. Pleasant little journey. Not too bad. Of course, there's always something behind a waterfall. And it's called the Waterfall Cavern. Shocking. So, no new enemies in here. They're going to be exactly the same as the Citadel of Trials. So you're going to fight some clay golems, you're going to fight some uh, nightmares, etc. Um, the only tricky part about this area is right before we get the treasure room, which has some pretty good items in, we're going to have to take on some cockatrices and some pyrolisks. So uh, they are dangerous, of course, because they can instantly kill your party members. But, uh, let's head south here, we're almost to the specialty room. Of course we're going to have Lots of random encounters over and over again. Par for the course. Alright, so there's the treasure room. Let's see if we can get in there. Of course not. Now there's a pressure plate right inside, so let's activate it. And luckily I was able to take them out very quickly. And now we're going to talk to this robot who has a cube for us that will allow us to access a flying fortress. Which is ultimately, we have to take on Tiamat, which is the boss for the fourth elemental stone. And now the robot shuts down for good. He accomplished his goal. But let's get some Jill. The ribbon. Wonder what that is. No idea, right? Final Fantasy vets. And uh, in this last chest is the Defender Sword, another common item throughout the Final Fantasy games. So we're going to throw the Defender on our main attacker. 
And then the ribbon is actually a helmet in this game. And it protects you against special attacks or status ailments, of course. So our most important party member for that is certainly our white mage. So we're going to throw that on Avok. Because it doesn't really increase your defense or anything, so it's not going to be that helpful for our red mage. And that's about it. So I'm going to exit out of here. And in my next episode, we're going to head over to that town. And then we're going to head towards the third dungeon to get an elemental stone. So, as always, viewers, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. So long.